I got my strength from my parents, uh, my, uh, the deacon who walked the neighborhood. Uh, my father was a, a quiet guy and he respected a lot of, and he was a supervisor at Western House. He uh, showed respect to his workers and they gave it right back to him. I was a wise guy in my high school. I was uh, probably the worst student they ever had in school. Uh, I wanted to play sports, I didn't care about my, uh, my academic standings. But that's why I think I dedicated my career to education. I want to make sure all those kids out there didn't make the same mistake I made. To the marathon bombing, Boston was never stronger. It was an amazing time in the city's history, that one week. Some of my staff uh, were, jumped over the, the, the fence when it happened to help some of the injured people. When we have a crisis in our city, uh, people come together. It's a big city, but it's a small city. Everybody knows each other. And when something happens, people rally behind that occurrence. His father was there more than for me. When I got here, I couldn't lift my legs off the bed. And the staff worked with me continually. I was able to get out and move around. How would I describe him as a patient? Uh, well, he was a challenge, but not any more of a challenge than any of our other patients. I was a model patient. I did everything they told me to do. <laughs> he thought he was in charge, but he really wasn't in charge. <laughs> the mayor would head down to the gym. Uh, he was able to get inspiration from patients, and he was able to inspire the patients as other patients as well. Um, you know, just being able to have a conversation with them and really encourage them as they were doing their exercises. Of course, some of it was a delaying tactic to not have to do his own therapy, but it was a good thing in the end for both him and the patients. But not just me, it's not about me, it's about the other folks that helped out. I mean, I've seen some of the uh, survivors of the marathon who are here. I was with them last week. Wow, they got a whole new life. But they said, yeah, well, if it wasn't for Spall, then I wouldn't be doing this. I think it was on this floor, the day it opened, I was walking by with David, looking at some of the rooms, and I said, who owns that land there? And he said, the BRA. I said, that's me. And so we did this playground, this beautiful playground, in four months. It was amazing how we cut through all the red tape, and some of the red tape we have never cut yet, but still, it's open and kids enjoy themselves. Beautiful location, I mean, just think about it. I mean, right in the water, you know, like a little peninsula. When you come to Spalding, you know, I mean, you're, you're a little frustrated at time, but look, at it, it's a place of hope. It gives you hope to get back on your feet, get back and doing the things you did in life. You might have a little a different way of doing it, but uh, the staff here will be there for you all the time, 24-7. And that's important. You have to have the determination to get better, but the staff is determined to get you better. That's the strength of this hospital, how we do it together. It was always thought of as the best place to come for rehabilitation. Um, it's a um, very special place. I, I can't say enough about it. I mean, it's an oasis in the city of Boston on the Boston Harbor.